What's going on y'all? It's Nick with Bear Family Farms. Today we're out here looking at a little area we got set up in these woods here that we're planning on putting the yearling billies at. I think it's, I think when I mapped it, it's somewhere around 10 acres, maybe a little bit less than 10 acres. Uh, we got it all set up. We got our charger here. You can hear it popping. Uh, I have a uh, pole mount um, solar panel deal. All this is just a T-post in the ground. Cut it off a little bit. Put this over it. And then uh, that solar panel will go up on there and then gets it up off that uh, tote. Sometimes when the wind blows, it blows it off. Uh, so that'll mitigate that problem. And uh, it's pretty simple. You take that T-post out when you're ready to move the animals and you know you leave the land the way it was for the landowner. Keeps them happy. Um, you can see the grounding rods there. We'll go ahead and turn this bad boy off and drive on in the gate. We came in here a few days ago and we started shredding some paths down and, and moving some small trees out of the way with the tractor. Uh, a lot of this area is pretty tight as far as thickness so I can't really get that side by side in there it's too too wide but I do have a Polaris little four-wheeler that gets in there pretty nice and we'll come back and and uh, go through the perimeter with uh, that but as you can see that gate you know, pretty simple use rope or something to tie it off to that uh, PVC pipe keeps it from grounding out so let's go ahead and drive in here and take a look at what it looks like before the goats get after it So as far as water, we're going to haul our own water in. We need to use it with our IBC totes up on center blocks as we've seen in some of our previous videos. Um, there's a tank over here that is pretty low and I really don't want to pump out the water out of that tank. Uh, especially because this is not our, this is leased land. We don't, we don't really, if we're, if we're close enough to haul the water in, we're going to haul it in. But as you can see, there's a tank over there. Uh, but it's pretty thick. Let's see if I can get through on some of these paths. That's the perimeter over there. But I cut these paths back in, I don't know, the late fall of last year, getting getting the area ready because I knew I wanted to use this this little sliver of of land for a small herd of yearling billies. So as you can see, the grass comes up pretty nice when you shred it out. But it's pretty darn thick in here. Uh, I kind of didn't really, I kind of just went with where I thought the tractor would fit and thankfully I didn't run over any loose wire or anything like that but it's really 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 thick in here and I think the goats will be occupied for a month at least. <laughs> uh, but yeah let's just, I'll shut up now and let you guys take a look at the scenery a little bit. Like I said, we're gonna drive down this area with the with the four wheeler. 
the goats much rather have brows, you know, like like you see in here in this video, versus you know a terrace field or you know a hay field full of winter wheat, which is what's over there. As you can see, it ain't very tall, but we've also had cows on there. I have been keeping it gnawed down pretty good. We just tilled 40 acres uh, on the other side of this terrace field that we're going to plant some Sudan hay grazer in. Uh, see if I can get a video of that. Just throw that in here, I guess. Here's a bird's eye view of that terrace field that we just saw on the other side of that fence. Uh, over here in the corner that we're about to fly on over to is that 40 acre field that we just got tilled up. Uh, the owner of this land has been a, or is, an amazing mentor for us. He's taught us so many things about agriculture and livestock as a whole, uh, the land, farming and ranching, any, all of the above life. Um, he's a great friend of ours and we try and help him out whenever he needs a hand and he does the same for us and uh, like I said we're gonna get this planted here soon but, but mainly here I just wanted to say the importance of having mentors as a young farmer or rancher is probably the most important thing in our books that you can do Yes. Uh, but we're going to drive through that perimeter with um, with the four wheeler like I said earlier uh, it's pretty tight in there uh, right there it looks pretty open but when you get back on either side it gets pretty tight with big oak trees that are in the way that I really didn't want to knock over let's go ahead and reverse out of here and keep driving through We've had netting up on this side of this uh, the barbed wire fence before, so the livestock, or not the livestock, the wildlife know what our white fence means. So hopefully we'll be able to get those yearling billies in here probably about a, a week or so, maybe less. Uh, and let them start going to work. As you can see, it's pretty, it's really bumpy in here. Pigs have really tore the ground up to the point where you can't even really drive without, you can't drive over two, three miles an hour without getting some air. But yeah, the main, the main reason behind this video, folks, is I just wanted to show you guys how thick and green it is before we let the goats go in here. Uh, so we'll go ahead and end this clip. I guess, and I'll pick back up while I'm driving around it with the, with the four wheeler. As we take a quick drive around the fence, I just wanted to take the time to kind of explain further in detail what we do uh, pretty self-explanatory though you know we come in we we'll put a bu bush hog behind us we got a chainsaw we got loping shears you know we got all that good stuff getting a good you know five foot six foot opening enough to be able to drive around it and you know check it uh, one of the main problems we have with this stuff is actually the hogs the hogs are real bad in our area uh, they'll kind of they'll touch it and most of the time they go forward not backwards but 
after a while they get used to it and they learn like hey that that stuff's hot and they don't really mess with it after that that's why we don't put them in here until a week or two uh after it being up and it being hot and and whatnot but you know in bigger areas sometimes we still find pigs are are actually trapped in the area uh but the dog will do a pretty good job of, of getting them out of there we've never had any any issues as far as pred predation with our uh livestock guardian dogs are pretty they're pretty on point we're pretty proud of of all of our guard dogs actually uh so back to the fence like i was saying uh this stuff's portable it's, we can pick it we take it down put it up you know, we usually have you know one to three paddocks ready to go ready to move the goats into they'll they'll be in there for you know a week or two or you know sometimes longer sometimes shorter kind of just depending on the browse lines that we see um, we usually like to get them about nipple high and then as far as browse lines then we'll go ahead and move them we'll, if it's far away we'll trailer them there and if not they're pretty well bucket trained that's why it's important to have a couple docile ones in there judas goats to help lead the herd uh, to the next paddock where you want them to be and we also have a, a herding dog or two in training that also play a pretty good role as far as you know hurting them and getting them where they need to go